Welcome to the daily word for the season of Easter. Today's reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter thirteen, verses thirteen to twenty-five. Paul and his companions set sail from Paphos and came to Perga in Pamphylia. John, however, left them and returned to Jerusalem. That they went on from Perga. And came to Antioch in Pisidia. And on the Sabbath day, they went into the synagogue and sat down. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the officials of the synagogue sent them a message, saying, "Brothers, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, give it." So Paul stood up and, with a gesture, began to speak. You Israelites and others who fear God, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our ancestors and made the people great during their stay in the land of Egypt. And with uplifted arm, He led them out of it. For about forty years, He put up with them in the wilderness. After He had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan. He gave them their land as an inheritance for about four hundred and fifty years. After that, he gave them judges until the time of the prophet Samuel. Then they asked for a king, and God gave them Saul, son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, who reigned for forty years. When he had removed him. He made David their king. In his testimony about him, he said, "I have found David, son of Jesse, to be a man after my heart, who will carry out all my wishes. Of this man's posterity, God has brought to Israel a savior, Jesus, as He promised. Before His coming, John had already proclaimed." A baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his work, he said, "What do you suppose that I am? I am not he, no, but one is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of the sandals on his feet." This is the word of the Lord. The good news is the Lord Jesus Christ. What we have just read is the story of Paul and his companions at a city called Antioch in Pisidia, the southern part of the province of Galatia. They took part in the service in the synagogue and gave the congregation an exhortation. Upon the invitation of the official there. The acts of the apostles do not specify which parts of the law and the prophets were read, but Paul preached the identity of Jesus as the Messiah to those present, be they Jews or those who feared God, that he was the son of David, promised it by God, just like how it was described it in the second book of Samuel, chapter seven, verses eight to sixteen. Paul's homily summarized how the Lord God had mercy on the Israelites, how He brought them out from Egypt into wilderness, going through the periods of rule by judges and the kings. Jesus Christ is the descendant of David, King of Israel, and His appearance is the fulfillment of God's promise. Before He appeared, there was John the Baptist, preparing for His way. And preaching the baptism of repentance. In today's Christianity, or in many of our parishes, there are many forms of evangelistic meetings, which include some testimony, a sharing by a certain guest about how he or she has experienced the Heavenly Father's grace in one's own life. These stories of testimony often makes us touch it, and even let others know about Christianity. Indeed, they can be good starting points of knowing God, but our faith can definitely not end at others' experience, or not know the history and background of salvation. 
Therefore, it is not appropriate if we overemphasize the testimony of believers, while neglecting how God saved the world through the experience of the Israelites and through His only Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. God has given us salvation and wants us to experience Him personally, so that we can be released from the bondage of sin through repentance, to have the joy of renewal, and to have hope and bountiful life through the resurrection of Christ. Therefore, it is not a bad thing to have testimony, but we cannot forget the roots of our faith. That is in today's reading. We are reminded again through Paul's homily at Antioch. The cruz of the gospel and salvation are that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, and He is the fulfillment of God's promise to humankind. Let us have a time of reflection. How do you experience the grace of the Heavenly Father? How familiar are you with the history of the Israelites' experience of God's salvation? Let us pray. O Lord, send us the life-giving Spirit, so that we can be a good testimony to the Lord, to help those who are near us, to make our prayers. Words and actions models for others, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.